the evolution of Combat Beat is live, and since its launch, thousands of you have been putting it to the test. Mod Race has been looking at how you can get the most out of the tools at your disposal, and in this video, he shows us just some of what he's found. So without further ado, take it away, Mod Race. Okay, so let's take a look at how you chat in the new combat system. Some people have been asking about this on the forums, and what you notice now, above your uh, chat box, you've got an action bar. Now, by default, keyboard inputs are going to go to that action bar. So if you want to type now, you'll need to first press enter, or alternatively, just click in the little box down the bottom, and then you'll be able to type again. Now, if you're not doing any combat, or not using the action bar, what you can do is click that little button there to minimise it, and whilst the action bar is minimised, you can type just as you do in the live game at the minute without having to press enter. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can do some skilling with the action bar, because it's not all for combat. So what you can do is use your new ability book that replaces the old magic spell book, and drag abilities over to the action bar. For example here, we're doing some high alchemy. So what you do is drag it over, pop it on the bar, and then all you need to do is press the key, in this case 1, and then click on the thing you want to alk. So that makes it a lot easier compared to the old system where you had to position everything just right in your inventory and move your scroll bars up and down. Now all you've got to do is press 1 and alk away. So what we're going to do now is drag some emotes over to the action bar. So the action bar is not just for combat and skilling, you can do all sorts with it. So if you're doing like a, a social gathering, what you can do is pop your emotes on the bar and then just press, for example here, one or two to do yes or no. Now something else you can do with the action bar is you can drag stuff down from up there on the minimap down to the action bar. For example here, we've dragged down our quick prayers and our run button. Then to turn your quick prayers on, all you need to do is hit one. Now this is really cool. For skillers, what you can do is you can drag objects to the action bar. For example, in this case, we're doing some iron ore. So if you're power mining, you've got an inventory full of ore, you don't want it anymore, drag it over to your action bar, and then what you can do is just press 1, and it will drop it on the floor. So if you want to empty your inventory full of ore, for example, iron ore, or sandstone, or granite, just hammer 1, and away it goes. So let's take a look now at some combat, because this is what the action bar was primarily designed for. So at the minute, we're going to look at some melee, then we'll move on to range and mage in a second. Now the first thing you'll notice, in the middle of the screen here, this guy's got a really beefy looking shield on. Now this is a new item we've added to the game, called a Bandos shield, and you'll get this from God Wars. Now something that's important to consider in combat now is, do you go all out offence using dual wielded weapons, or perhaps a two handed weapon, or do you instead go for a more defensive approach using a weapon and a shield? Now in this example, we're going to be using a shield, and you can see we've got some cool abilities down here which need a shield to be used. For example, this one's called Revenge. When you use it, anyone who attacks you makes you do more damage back. So it's a, 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 good, a good tactic to use. So let's quickly run through some melee abilities here to see what you can use in combat. Now those of you who haven't had a chance to play the BT yet might not be familiar with what the abilities are. Basically they're split up into three categories. At the bottom end, you've got what we call basic abilities. Basic abilities can pretty much be used whenever you like, and they do um, around about a medium amount of damage. Then moving up, you'll see these ones here are greyed out at the minute. That's because they're called threshold abilities. Threshold abilities can only be used once you've filled your adrenaline bar up to 50% or greater. We'll touch on the adrenaline bar just in a little second once we start doing some combat. And then finally, the aim of the adrenaline bar is to get it completely full, then you can bust out ultimate abilities. These do a lot of damage and they really can swing combat in your favour. So let's do some combat here. We say we're swinging away and you see down in the bottom left there our adrenaline bar is slowly filling up and whenever we use a basic ability we get a little chunk of adrenaline added on. So as we go through, we work our way through our abilities and we're building up our adrenaline bar and now you see there, the adrenaline bars lit up, so we've hit threshold. Now we can use our more powerful abilities. And you can see on the character there, lovely uh, shiny effects and lots more damage. Now one of the cool tactics melee users can use is to use an ability called Massacre. Now this puts a bleed effect on your opponent, but it comes with a, a caveat that if they move, they take triple damage. So a good tactic to use. 
pop the ability on them and then run away and get them to chase you. Then you'll have forced them to move and make them take triple damage. So touching back on the earlier question we asked, should we use offense or defense? If you use a shield, you've got access to two powerful abilities called resonance and reflect. These can cause you to heal instead of being harmed and they can also reflect damage back at your opponent. So it's always something to bear in mind whether you should use a shield or not. But let's move on now and take a look at range. Now range have got some cool tactics they can employ. What we've got here is an ability called binding shot. You, you use this on your opponent and it's like the mage spell bind. It roots them in place so they can't move. Now a good tactic for range to use is use binding shot on your opponent like so. Then they can't move and use the ability escape. This moves you away to give you range on your target. Then what you can do is use another ability called Piercing Shot. Now Piercing Shot does a nice chunk of damage, but if the opponent is stunned whilst you use it, it does even more damage. So it's a good combo to use there. Now we're going to use a Threshold ability called Snap Shot. This one fires two shots in quick succession. Now you may remember this, because it was actually the old Magic Shortbow special attack. And as we build up more abilities, more adrenaline, we're going to get closer and closer to our ultimate ability. So as we see here, we bind the opponent in place, we get some range on him, and now we can see we've got a full adrenaline bar. So let's use an ultimate ability. This one's called Incendiary Shot. This one, you can see it sticks an arrow in him, and after a few seconds, it explodes. Now, we're actually using a test account here, so it didn't do much damage to him. But fighting a real opponent in live PvP, this could easily do three or four thousand damage. So these things are really powerful and they really make combat a lot more interesting. So finally, let's take a look at Mage. Now, Mages have a lot more options in the new system, actually. And one of the options is actually just making your life easier. What you can do is you drag your spells onto the action bar and then you can choose to set them up as your autocast spell from the action bar instead of having to hunt around in your spellbook for them. So let's start some combat. And you notice that as you fire spells now, they fire out of your weapon. So we're, we've got a, a Staff of Light here, and we're firing our spells out of it. And a good combo for mages to use is the first ability they can use is called Impact. This stuns your opponent, and whilst they're stunned, you can use an ability called Torture. Now this, similar to what Rage were doing earlier, this does increased damage if your opponent is stunned whilst you use it. So it's a good combo to use. But another tip mages may like to use is that they've got a number of abilities such as Chain which are designed to be used on multiple targets but you can still use them on a single target. So don't forget if you've got an ability on your bar and it's lit up, always use it because it always means, always means more damage. So now we've filled up our adrenaline bar, we've got a glowing bar, we're going to use a cool mage ultimate ability. This one's a little different to the others you've seen. Because this one is not an attack, it transforms you into an elemental. And as you can see, we've turned into a fire elemental because we've been casting fire spells. If, for example, I'd been casting water spells, I'd have turned into a water elemental. And the effect this puts on you basically increases all your spells damage. And you can see here, we're busting out thousand damage pops at a time. So, those of you who used to max hits of, you know, 400, 500, things are going to get a lot different in the new combat system. You'll have a lot more hit points, but you'll have a lot more cool ways to take hit points off your opponent. Okay, and finally, a final tip and trick for mages amongst you is how does a mage dual wield? Well, mages can't put a spell in each hand, but what they can do, they can go around down one of two routes. They can either wield a stave like here we've got the staff of light and if you were using a staff and you auto cast you'll notice your spells do 150 percent damage so it's always better to use a staff than nothing at all but the other option mages have open to them is to use two new items that we've added to the game we've got wands and offhand items like books or orbs now if you're wielding two items like we're here we've got the wand and the book if you're wielding two then your spell cast time will be half. You're casting twice as many spells. So you can see just how fast we're blasting away at him there. So the mages have the two options open to them. They can either go down the slow cast option, which does high damage, or they can go down the fast cast option, which does a little bit less damage, but more damage over time.
and you can try out Mod Race tips and tricks when the beta is opened up to all members this weekend. If you have a tip or a trick you'd like to share, tell us about it by emailing it to vodkabee at jagex.com.